It's the 18th of November. Joey on the Caribou Weather Dude YouTube channel here. Hit like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend. Help grow the channel. Trying to get to 10,000 subscribers this year. I'm not going to make it, but uh, I'm going to keep saying anyways that I'm trying to get to 10,000 this year. Maybe we'll get pretty close. We're uh, almost 100 away from 9,000. Big time excitement. Okay. Lots of other things to talk about. Now, uh, this is one of those weeks where there's actually not a whole lot in southern BC going on. A bit of a system does move up the west coast and up into the north, I think, through Wednesday. A little bit of some snowfall and some rain up there. Okay. We have an atmospheric river system that's impacting California. And we got a secondary one coming this weekend towards British Columbia. So some strong storming on the west coast. The one system that's moving through California is going to make for some severe weather in the United States. Maybe Thursday-ish. Uh, Texas, Oklahoma, tornado possibilities, severe thunderstorms and whatnot. So that's one story that people are talking about. And then well, after all these uh, nasty systems move through, they're going to help initiate a flow of cold air from the Arctic. We're going to have some cold weather in British Columbia sooner than later. Our first real winter cold is coming, my friends. All that and more today in the show. Let's go. There it is. As of Tuesday, November 18th, the strong atmospheric river, which is actually a Category 4, is impacting the U.S. West Coast. Category 4 atmospheric river is uh, um, beneficial, but with some danger, whereas Category 5 is often mostly dangerous. So it's a strong, strong atmospheric river hitting down there right now. It's impacting the U.S. West Coast, the northern and central California uh, areas as well. They're getting the most significant impacts. It's a separate atmospheric river then is coming to British Columbia's south coast uh, mid-November there by the weekend. Current conditions in BC appear less severe maybe than what we're seeing down there. So that's some good news for BC. As far as the west coast forecast goes, the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes has indicated an AR4 is currently impacting the region down there bringing heavy rain to coastal areas and significant snowfall to the highest elevations of the Sierra Nevada between 6,800 feet. Model runs have suggested the system's progression may be slow, leading to potentially prolonged periods of precipitation. The National Weather Service issued various watches, warnings, and advisories, including high wind warnings as the storm evolves. Meanwhile, for British Columbia, though, our forecast, uh, we do not have a major atmospheric river event today, no, but through November, we're going to see that uh, come back. In fact, by the weekend, I think we're going to see this atmospheric river ever come back. We'll look at uh, some of the details here in the maps in a matter of minutes. Uh, conditions are mainly cloudy today with a chance of drizzle or showers across the south coast in Vancouver Island up the west coast. However, for the most part, southern BC looking pretty good today. The River Forecast Center uh, saying we have no flood advisories or anything like that at the moment or any statements, so that's all good news as well. Here you can see down in the bottom corner the low pressure system that's bringing the rainfall and snow up into the mountains of California. Rainfall on the coast and heavy winds. You can see how that uh, counterclockwise motion right there, a dead giveaway that there's a low pressure pressure system right there. That's going to move inland and begin to affect Texas and places like that. Wednesday and a Thursday, bringing some severe weather here. Here we can see this big plume of moisture stretching across the Pacific Ocean. Got the high pressure here, got high pressure there, squeezing that together as it develops over the next few days. And that will tighten it up into a narrower, narrower band and give us the atmospheric river conditions that I think we'll be seeing this weekend in BC again, though probably not Category 4 atmospheric river the way that uh, is being experienced down south or has been experienced down south over the last uh, day or so. Okay, looking at the jet stream map right now, GFS model at least, jet stream map, then... Now, we have this threat around the 25th and beyond of some very cold air coming into BC. That is something I'm watching right here. So this jet stream is basically the delivery system somewhere around 17, 18, 20,000 feet. The delivery system of most of the weather that we experience here on the ground. Bit of a messy situation here this week. And what you're going to see here are a couple things that stand out to me, first of all. Okay, so first of all, we have our main jet stream flow, just to keep that in mind. There's some ridging there that surprises me because that's when I'm expecting our cold weather. So I'm curious about how that's going to play out if we can actually rely on any model right now to reliably tell us what the cold weather is going to look like, how cold it's going to get, when it's going to be here, who exactly gets what. Uh, the fact that GFS has this ridging in the modeling system tells me like, wow, we may have a big rebound out of that cold. Uh, so basically nobody knows anything yet for sure. You know what I mean? We just have some suggestions. We have some plays um, here on some, some different uh, ideas of what could happen here in the modeling. But we don't have a concrete solution yet. We don't have a for sure thing. So let's get through these 
atmospheric river uh, outbreak here this next uh, week or so and then see where it takes us from there. Okay, so as you can see, large storms that are moving down through the southern United States. That's what's been bringing a lot of uh, precip to California and heavy rain and things like that and weather warnings. Uh, here's today's situation. You can see how uh, that moves in land, makes a bit of a trough, combines with some of the moisture off the Gulf Coast there. Could make for some severe thunderstorms on Thursday, for example, in Oklahoma and Texas. Then you got a secondary event going through there like next Tuesday or Wednesday or something to that degree. Uh, large storm in Newfoundland going on still today. We had this large uh, non-stop stormy show happening in Atlantic Canada. Okay, we're going to talk about the cold for a second, even though I just said that we don't know anything really for sure about what the cold's going to do. Uh, fair enough. Seems a little bit awkward. The uh, immediate event coming is this weekend. Stormy weather is tonight when uh, some weather moves up into northern BC. Maybe Hadaguay takes some rainfall, things like that tonight. You can see our atmospheric river kind of set up here. You can see how you got the cooler water in the North Pacific. You got the warmer water down south. And uh, I mean, this is air that we're looking at, but I mean, the air and the warm. Uh, the warm water and the warm air correspond generally together. There's something something happening there on both coasts that's helping make storms uh, angry. By the time of the 22nd here, we've had, uh, you know, coming through a uh, number of days of precip by that point. We're getting the backside of a low pressure system. That's going to help drop temperatures down. It's going to pull that cold air down on us. And sometime, you know, Monday, cold in northern BC. Oh, that's Chilcotin. That's Coast Mountains. That's cold into BC next Tuesday. That's some definite cold air. And that's not that far away. That's a week out. So that makes me feel like maybe, maybe the model's in on this. Well, do we have that ridging show up and push it back? You can see the cold air now breaking out all the way down the United States, down the mountain ranges, all the way into Texas, seeing some freezing weather. Uh, Northern Ontario, very cold. Manitoba and Saskatchewan, very cold. Alberta, kind of cold, kind of cold. Southern Ontario, kind of nice. Uh, I want to go there. I think I'm going to go there. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And then, you, oh, wow. See, that was a quick Chinook there for Alberta. That was nice. Does the cold weather go? So where's that ridging? Where's that ridging that we just saw in the other modeling, all right? Doesn't seem to show up here. Well, maybe a little there. Now we're in December. Now we're in December. And uh, I see that cold air moving east, moving east. Am I going to go to Ontario just in time to get the cold? Probably. It's going to be stupid of me. I uh, will probably get out of here just in time to to catch the cold on both sides and catch it here and then go over there and meet it before it comes over. Okay, so first we have our... Uh, Nonsense to go up in northern BC here. Doesn't really bring that much. By Friday, we have a secondary event come on in. Here comes the atmospheric river piling on in. Uh, finally, another storm in Newfoundland again. Nonstop up there. You kind of get the pictures we play on through. Where's that cold air? That's that cold air right there sinking down. Boom. So there it is showing up on this modeling. Look at that. But there is a little bit of a ridging right there. But that was very temporary. Like a little bit of a warm spell there on the very west coast that maybe even here in Wells we don't get. Wouldn't that be awful awful you can sit there and look at somebody uh not far away who's uh having a pretty nice time while you're sitting there freezing 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 but that big thick blue line that's basically the freezing line anything below there is mostly basically not hitting below freezing at all during the day and anything above it at some point of the day is getting uh, in the freezing category and people are going to hate this forecast because i'm like going to say things like atmospheric river and extreme cold in the same sense as people be like well that's just winter that's just rain so there's the first system there wednesday as you can see it really doesn't come inland much it gives us some cloudy conditions and whatnot uh but it, all, all in all southern bc especially is having an okay day having an okay day we're not really getting that midweek storm for a lot of us that we've been getting pretty consistently the last number of weeks but here it shows up and you can see that big long i mean right across to the philippines like that's how far that band of water goes it kind of breaks off eventually high pressure interrupts it you got high pressure here you got high pressure there squeezing them together so that, that band of moisture really has nowhere to go and it's heading right towards the south coast more or less looks like vancouver island south coast that's what we're looking at through this weekend that's what we're going to be waiting to see what happens and then we have that high cold pressure after and we'll just go one more quick run through Newfoundland under big, again, big mid-latitude cyclone out east, 976 millibar, low thunderstorms there south of the Great Lakes there, high pressure more or less in the prairies, 
few flurries uh, bound in there. A little bit of flurries in southern BC, but nothing spectacular, nothing worth mentioning in terms of uh, statements, watches, or warning. Here's our new storm coming on up. However, it's going to uh, be deflected by this high pressure a little bit and make its way up towards uh, basically the Yukon border up to the Alaska Panhandle and whatnot and push its way in through there. So although the coastal BC get a bit of a rush from this. You can see here Haida Gwaii is taking wind now Wednesday morning. Uh, overnight between now and Wednesday morning, you can see that system is just off the coast there looking meaty, looking big. Hope you're okay. Scotty, hope you're watching my forecast videos like I told you to do, buddy. I told you, told you. Got two little systems up there kind of. And so it's slapping up and down the coast, right? Like if you're on the coast, you're going to see a bit of rain. So I say southern BC is not going to be seeing much. I'm really meaning like anybody who's caught underneath this high pressure that's more or less uh, going right up into the Northwest Territories and right down from there uh, into the U.S. Plains until you get uh, fairly close to Oklahoma Bay, uh, more or less. Here's a large high pressure uh, out there, and you got another one here, and those two together are helping squeeze all this moisture together into one big ribbon. Northern BC, Alaska Panhandle taking a lot of rain. Northern BC, the big mountains of the BC Yukon border, big time snow, a little bit of flurries into the Yukon, a little bit of flurries towards uh, northern Yukon, uh, low sitting 963 millibar low along uh, basically where the Aleutian Islands sort of chain off from the mainland on Thursday night, and now you got big time snowfall, big time precipitation, and you can see that ribbon of moisture is just ready to come. It's ready to come. The two highs have squeezed it into one concentrated narrow band and has made it much like a river. Again, this doesn't look near as bad as what California has just been getting. They've been getting, uh, like we said, a Category 4 atmospheric river. No, not at all. But Friday morning now, Friday morning, and we're already messy in BC. Messy through the Pine Pass, messy down Highway 16, messy in the Amanika, messy as you go Highway 16 out towards Terrace. Mix of rain, a little bit of freezing rain at times even. Messy down the Coast Mountains. If you're trying to get into Bella Coola, you're going to be running into a lot of rainfall. It's a bit warmer, at least, uh, ahead of this storm. It's bringing some warm, uh, some subtropical warmth up, but again, not incredibly warm. By any stretch of the imagination, but hey, if you're in the high country, you might see some snow. A lot of you in the low country might see some rain during the day on Friday because of what I just said. Heavy <laughs> rainfall now working its way down Vancouver Island, down the Coast Mountains as you go Friday evening. That will come set itself, settle itself down near the lower mainland at some point and drop an exceedingly uh, interesting amount of rainfall on them. Snowfall down the Rocky Mountains if you want to go into the Columbias, you want to go over Rogers Pass, you want to go down uh, any, tra any traveling into highway uh, into Alberta from the highways there Saturday morning is inadvisable, I would think, unless you're going through the very, very north sector because it looks like the piece is going to be uh, fairly free of snow at that time. If you're in southern BC trying to get into Alberta, you're just asking for trouble. Saturday morning, you're uh, going to see that start to tail off during the day on Saturday. Maybe by Saturday night, you could find a, a way through the mountains if you have uh, plans that you just need to do. But then by then, we're getting the next storm already shot putting right in. And this is the one. Look at this. Boom. That's still a lot, a lot there. So we get the little break there. And then the next one shows up in time for Sunday. And we're right back into her. Southern BC being the big time target, I think, this weekend when it comes to Sunday. So uh, if you're in southern British Columbia, this could be the time where you're actually going to start seeing some snowfall in places like Williams Lake, Quinell, uh, areas that really haven't seen too much yet. Could see a little bit of freezing rain in southern BC. Unfortunately, a little bit of rainfall to the south of that. The low pressure system will be sitting right in the middle of the province there by Monday morning. And we are going to have a good show of it. We're going to so start next Monday with a mess. So if you are aware, uh, be aware. And what's going to happen is that the backside of this is going to drag that cold air on down. So as we watch that now finally make its way over to the Alberta side by Monday afternoon, become an Alberta clipper. You can already just guess what's going on behind there. What kind of temperatures are in behind there? Well, you can see here it is. And you can see it's feeding on the warm air, bringing the warm air up from the south. It's bringing the cold air down from behind. The clash of the two is what's making this system so large and explosive. Unfortunately for us, that is what's going to make the cold air come down to us here. So let's see if we can find out a little bit of something about this cold air. See if we can find a little bit of detail here, a little hint on where it's going. Every model has a different solution. That's the thing. So like, you know, how much of it are we going to get? This modeling solution doesn't seem to think the 26 is that big of a deal, but then another storm goes through and we watch that cold air start climbing down the, the Rocky Mountains. We have a large uh, storm that basically becomes a continental-wide storm the beginning of December 1st. So, um, again, I'm not saying that all these solutions are going to happen, but these are like the things that we're looking for, we're talking about, and we're concerned about coming on in. Trump back here for exactly. And so ECMWF isn't as convinced as GFS is. Now, uh, this is a different model than we were looking at a minute ago. So let's, like, let's compare them here. 
quickly before we go. And here's ECMWF for the 26th. There's GFS at 1 in the morning. So you can see a bit more of that cool there bumping down by Thursday. Let's go uh, overnight the night before. GFS seems to think uh, a little bit colder in southern central BC on Wednesday the 26th. And ECMWF more or less agrees. If we go to, uh, say, the 27th, part of the 20th, 28th, say, for example, in the morning, uh, ECMWF says that we got a big storm system there. GFS not. So, you know, so we're looking a week out. Okay. So we're looking a week out. We know that cold air is going to break out at some point here. No one's exactly sure how or who or where or even fully when, but we, we know it's coming. We know it's coming, right? So keep tuning in to myself and all the other weather people. Somebody at some point is going to have a clear. Uh, the models are getting firmer, but I'm still not seeing like consistent solutions across uh, all the major modeling systems. We just looked at two and two only. Okay, hit like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time, everybody. Stay safe. Have a great week. Bye now.